So we got two cups of flour. We got our little well in our flour. This is two cups of flour. And I'm also going to just keep this extra flour here. There's like a quarter of a cup of extra flour there on the side because we might need that. It's only flour, guys. It's not going to hurt you, okay? So if it gets on you. The next fun thing is the eggs, all right? So this is hilarious. I, I did this with two middle school classes yesterday, and um, they really had a good time with this part. Two whole eggs. Crack them on the inside of your bowl or on a flat of table. Now, in another container, let's move the well out of the way for right now. Another bowl. We're going to crack our six eggs, but we're only going to use the yolk. So we have to learn how to separate our eggs. There's tools you can buy. You can do it with your eggshells. I like to do it this way, with really clean hand. I just go in there, stick my hand right in the goo, hold that egg gently like this, that egg yolk, and all the whites will fall away. Then you're left with an egg yolk. See that? Then you just toss that little, well, throw, gently slide that little egg yolk right in there. So we need six of those. So here's the eggshell method. You, you, you scoop some of it out, all, and then you go back and forth between your eggs shells. And then you can get rid of, all, rid of a lot of the egg white that way. Okay, always wipe your hands off. Oh, and you need to always um, wash your hands after using raw meat or eggs, because you can get sick from raw egg. And a lot of the kids will try to eat raw egg, like in cookie dough and everything like that. Now you're gonna take your fork. We're gonna get it kind of fast now. And you're just gonna beat this up a little bit, your egg. Four ingredients to make pasta dough, okay? Here's your second, your um, flour, egg, three, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. We're gonna put one tablespoon in there. I'm just gonna eyeball it. But basically one tablespoon just to add a little bit of um, richness, a little bit of smoothness. And then you're gonna put a pinch of salt, which I'm just gonna pull it out of my container, but this is about a pinch. It's just a little, little tiny little, like a little pinch of salt in there, okay? All right, beat that up. Pour this into your well carefully. Right in your well, it goes very carefully. I am doing this on a cat in a casserole pan because I'm on video and I'm trying not to make a huge mess. There you go. Egg in. Soak this right away. Is it egg? Look at that. It's beautiful. It looks like a big egg, right? Yes, it does. Yeah. It's then you take your. Egg. I know it's gorgeous. And then you take your little fork here. And you're going to start just pulling some of the edge of your flour in. Let's check my time, 11.21. Okay, good. Oh, 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 the dam is starting to break over on this side. So you get this kind of started mixing this in, pulling it. And I have a, a dam break over here on the other side. That's okay. It happens. Good thing I have it in the casserole. So you're just going to start incorporating this flour and egg together with your fork until you get to a point where you think you can get your hands in it. And guys, I don't know about you, but I just I just love mixing things up with my own hands. Whenever you walk into a kitchen, at school, at home, anywhere, at church, always wash your hands. And anytime you leave the kitchen and come back, always wash your hands. Okay, so look, this is nice and crumbly. Now it's time for me to get my hands into it. You see that? It's just crumbly. Now we're gonna get my hands into it. I'm gonna clean this fork off. And I have washed my hands several times, so there we go. And I'm just gonna start pulling this together gently. And this is, what we're making, guys, is a rustic pasta. Rustic means sort of it's a little bit gonna be bigger, a little chunkier than like a pasta that we're gonna put through a machine. We're not gonna put this through a machine. We're gonna use our hands, our rolling pin, 
and our knife. We're not going to put it through the KitchenAid attachment that many people have, although that's really fun to make, do. Today we're just going to do this like the simple old-fashioned way. So as you're doing this, you will notice if you need more flour, if it seems too wet, you can add a little bit more flour. If it seems too dry, you can add maybe a splidge of water, you know, but don't, usually it's the other way around. Usually it's like you need more flour. Okay, now that we have this, we're at this point where it's kind of in a ball. Okay, so I'm gonna do this thing where I lift and, and push down. Okay, good. Lift and push down, lift and fold, lift and fold, lift and fold. This needs a little bit more flour. So according to our recipe and according to my experience, we should need this for six to seven minutes. So at 1131, we'll be able to rest this. The reason we're needing this for seven minutes or so, it says actually in the recipe seven to 10 minutes, is you wanna build up the gluten. You want that gluten to be there and um, if you don't, if you're gluten intolerant, then there, then you use different flours. You can use rice flour and things like that. But you want to build up that gluten, that stretchiness in your dough. And you'll see what I mean later when I do the test to see if, if it bounces back. So here we go. This is the dough. It's in plastic film or the plastic bag. You can put it in plastic wrap. This is going to rest for a half an hour up until 12 o'clock. And then at the end, we're going to cook it, maybe before 12 o'clock, we're going to cook this, roll it out, cook it, okay, with our other pasta. This only takes three to four minutes to cook. We're going to make sauces. Mm -hmm. So, the very first thing we're going to do is get our handy dandy little gizmo going. Easiest sauce of all time, but also one of the most delicious. I'm gonna use a wooden spoon today to stir my sauce because that feels somewhat like rustic and Italian to use like, you know, your grandma's big wooden spoon that she might chase you around the kitchen with, but you know, if you're misbehaving. You're just gonna put a little olive oil in your pan. This is a straight up olive oil, lemon, garlic, and a little bit of chopped tomato sauce. So olive oil, okay, so cut a couple halves of lemon. And I'll show you how to avoid the seeds if there are any. We'll hold that till last. Garlic. We're gonna chop a couple garlic cloves. I'm gonna do this really fast so that we can get, get the next sauce in, which is really nice. You take your garlic, smash it, knife against, can you see this? Knife against the board, fist, smash. Garlic's in between the knife and the board, fist, Smash. The knife has to be flat. Flat knife, fist, smash. Whoa. Okay, don't do that. Where did it go? I lost one. Anyways, okay, get another one. <laughs> okay, let's move these out of the way. Fist, smash. Okay, that way that releases the oils and then it makes it breaks up the skin so it's easy to get the skin off. Cut your ends off. Remember to cut your end, the hard ends of your garlic off, the nub, cut that off. You do not want that in your, in your mixture, it's too hard. Chop off any bad spots, like the one I showed you, come right off. That garlic is still fine. More than half of that garlic is fine. Throw everything away. One more end. And then you're gonna mill it. So how we mill garlic is we just do a couple chops like this. Wash your fingers, keep your fingers away. Okay, and then, okay, watch this action. You hold your knife like this. Remember, firm grip, not one of these. Firm grip, okay? You're going to hold down your knife with one hand like this, and this one's going to chop like this. It's called milling. Okay, you just go like this. As if you were a machine. You go in little half circles. This is how I do parsley. 
this is how I, like any like loose small greens just a very nice thing easy thing to do so you get a nice rough chop you don't need this to be super fine or you can make it as fine as you like what we're trying to do is increase the surface area of every little nugget of garlic so that it adds more flavor to the oil scrape that right into the the pan i actually should have put my knife over to scrape it you don't want to use your sharp blade to scrape anything that might still be living on your on your cutting board. Okay, then a little bit of sweet tomatoes. Just your basic little tomato, any tomato that you like, grape tomatoes, whatever. And I'm going to take a couple of tomatoes. These are cleaned. Cut off any bad spots I see. I see a little bad spot. So here's the thing. Tomato, you need a sharp knife to cut a tomato. Tomatoes aren't real hard or anything, but because they're so gentle, skin, thin skinned and gentle, you need a knife that's just gonna slice right through that without damaging the vegetable, okay? So all we're gonna do is do a couple rough chops of this tomato so we can get all that juice in there. You don't have to use a full kitchen knife for a tomato. You can use a little tiny knife, like a little steak knife for a tomato. Or you can even use a serrated blade if you don't have a sharp kitchen knife because you can just sort of saw through it like this. Just sawing through that knife. Steak knife? Yeah, this is a, a steak knife. All right, so we're gonna take this tomato, add it to our mixture. Boom, all right, good. Now we're gonna go on to the next part of this turn on our our heat and get that sizzling up now just take a few minutes while that is going to sizzle up tomato garlic olive oil we're going to add our lemon squeeze our lemon into it here's how you avoid getting seeds you take your lemon half put your hand underneath your hands are your best tools ever, okay? Your hand's gonna catch the juice first and you, it's gonna pass through your fingers. Can you see that? You do not want, and then it'll also catch the seeds. It's like your hand is now a strainer and you use all your muscles. See how strong my hands are? That's from working clay, cause I'm a potter. I don't know if I ever told you guys that, but I, I, I am a potter and I work clay my whole life. So my hands are really strong. So there, I didn't have any seeds in that lemon. All right, and also lemon lemon juice is good for your skin. Okay, so all these are natural ingredients. Nothing processed here. Well, the olive oil was processed, you know, but tomatoes and garlic and lemon were not. Simple, basic ingredients for Italian food. And they taste fresh. Always have a towel ready tap your hands dry clean towel okay and then we just let this sizzle up a little bit now while that's sizzling up believe it or not when you were if you were to put pasta right into this freshly cooked pasta you're good to go you can add a little salt and pepper to this if you like that's all you need okay after this sizzles up for a bit i'm going to put it into a little jar so we can store it until the pasta is done and move on to the next sauce so I hope you guys can see this. I'm going to move it closer so you can. Can you see that? I wish you could smell this, okay? It just smells wonderful. And you can make this, guys. You can make this. This is better than going to McDonald's, all right? This is gonna taste better. It's, gonna, it's affordable. It's not expensive. Okay, this right here, I mean, I, it's, not, it's just not expensive. You can get all the ingredients to make like five or six meals for probably under $20. Okay, so that's good enough. We're just gonna let that, we're gonna let our garlic be a little um, sharp right now. So that means we're not gonna cook it all the way down so that it's gonna have a little bit of hotness to it. You know, if you've ever eaten a raw garlic versus an all the way cooked down garlic, there's a little bit of hotness. And also, the um, 
heat that retains from the in the bowl will continue cooking the garlic a little bit. So you, so we're going to stop this and very, Tara is going to very carefully get this juice into this little tiny bowl with the help of her wooden spoon. Sorry if I'm blocking the shot, but I'm just trying to get this done so we can get to our next one, which I'm very excited about, if you can tell. Okay. Good, 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 good. We did it. All right, so taking care, I'm going to use my towel here and just hit the top of my stove and the side of my pan you don't want. If you, if you have stuff on the side of your pan and you put it back on the heat, it's going to like heat up and kind of, kind of like harden. So you want that not to happen. So you just, as clean as you go, you just give things a little wipe here and there. It's going to help you in the end. Brown butter. So brown butter literally means brown butter. So you're going to put butter in a pan and heat it up and it's going to turn a little brown. You don't want it to be dark brown. You don't want it to be not brown. You want it to be just a little bit brown. So what I'm going to do, is, what they have here is a package of sage. Well, I'll just show you the sage, actually. There you go. You can buy this in little containers. You can, you, we, we grow it on the side of our house. It's a fuzzy little leaf plant that feels very soft. It smells so good. This is what you, it's always in turkey stuffing, Thanksgiving meals. Sage is delicious. So what I'm doing is I'm just picking my sage. You can also pop your sage, which means you can fry it in oil and it's really tasty. So I'm gonna put some sage in there. While, my, while I'm doing that, let's save time. We're gonna pop a whole stick of butter in there. So how much is a whole stick of butter? Eight tablespoons. And eight tablespoons means a half cup, okay? So if they say a cup or a quarter cup, you can actually take a stick of butter and cut it in half, okay? So I'm just gonna toss it in there. I've got some paper in there, out we go. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Take my sage, just with my fingertips, just taking it right off the thing. You don't want that big woodsy stock in there. You don't want that big woodsy stock in there, but some people, if you're cooking like a steak or something more rustic, you can actually take this. I will do this after, I'm gonna do that now. I'm just gonna take this whole, I'm gonna take this whole thing that's left over after I've picked it, and I'm just gonna put it right in the pan, okay? And that'll add a little extra flavor too. I'm gonna add some eggplant and some Parmesan, okay? So this is eggplant right here. And if you've ever roasted eggplant or cooked with eggplant, it's a beautiful thing. And then when you open it up, like I'm doing here, this one has very little seeds in it. All right, so I'm just gonna chop a little bit of eggplant and add it to this just to make it more body to it, but you can add whatever you want, okay? You, eggplant is fun. You can just make little dices. I'm sorry, I'm rushing through this to get it in the pan. So basically, just little dices of eggplant. We're gonna sprinkle it in the pan. Um, that means little squares. When I say dice, that means you cut it into little tiny squares. So you'll make slices, and then you'll cut those slices into thinner, smaller pieces. So that's my brown butter. Believe it or not, we're gonna shut that off because it is done. It doesn't take long for these simple sauces. That butter is brown, but it's not too brown. And we're gonna to toss this right into another glass bowl. I'll show you that so we can toss that with our pasta. We are ready to do our pasta now. Put some flour on the table. This dough feels a little sticky still. I'm just gonna give it a couple more kneads. Thank you, Patrick. Can you see this, guys? You're welcome. I'm giving this a couple more kneads. This is actually how I wedge clay, the way I'm doing it now, which is a spiral. I just make a little spiral, like it turns into a conical shape. But you're just building up that gluten. Can you see Patrick? No, oh, Patrick, they wanna see you. 
Patrick is famous. Get that, get your face in there. <laughs> Patrick is famous. You'll see him when he gets to taste it. Okay, here we go. So now I'm gonna take this dough. Let's see if it springs back a little bit. And this is a test. You, what you do is you wanna put your finger in it. Oh yes, it's springing back. If you push your finger in it and it starts to come back up, that's when you know you've built up enough gluten, okay? So then you're gonna take your knife and just divide it up into four parts or two parts. We're gonna do quarters right now. Put it back in the bag. Put it back in the bag so it doesn't dry out, okay? You take their, your thing here, your dough piece, make like a little cookie, okay? Like a little cookie. There, break down on the ground. Some flour on top of that. Rolling pin. All right. And roll. So you can see it stretching back on itself a little bit and how I was shown to do this was keep it going. You can fold it. The goal is to get this as thin, thin enough that you can see your hand through. So I'm gonna do a little fold there to get it more rectangular shape. Getting there, getting there. I'm gonna fold this again. You don't have to do this folding process, but I think it is helpful to get it into a nice shape at the end. And then when you fold things, when you, if you ever work in pastry, like if you had a croissant or um, any fine pastry at the baking shop, there's all those thin little layers. This is how they do that. They fold things and roll it and chill it, and that's called lamination. Okay. You wanna get this as thin as you possibly can without breaking it. Oh, this is starting to look real nice. Okay, so I'm gonna lift this up and show you guys. You see that? I'm gonna see if I can see my hand through it. Not quite yet, not quite yet. I'm gonna just make it a little thinner if I can. Flour right here. Oh yeah, there we go. I can see the flour through it on the table. So I think we're pretty much there. Oh, nice, okay. Nice and thin. And again, this is gonna be rustic. So what happens is when you do this, so we're gonna flour it again. Now what we're gonna do is, now my friends who are Italian, they're gonna like probably complain that this is not the best way to do everything, but we're trying our best here. I know one lady, she, does, she makes excellent Italian pasta and she rolls and rolls and rolls big, big, big sheets of pasta. And she flips it over her rolling pen to transfer it back to the table. All this really cool technique. I don't have that yet, yet guys, I'm, you know, to be perfectly honest. Then I'm gonna roll it over onto itself and give it some little slices just like this. My kitchen table should be safe. I'm not, this is not like chopping it with a lot of force, but just slicing it gently. And what happens, you'll see with these noodles, is when they hit the water and cook, they're going to expand a little bit. So they're going to actually look bigger in the end. And that's all right. Like I said, this is a rustic dish we're doing. We're not doing... Um, every noodle does not have to be perfect. And then you're going to take these little noodles and you're going to kind of fluff them. Fluff them up. And the thinner your noodle is, the more longer. Eat, you know that pasta. Yes, look, this is how you make pasta. This is really like the old way of making pasta. So as soon as we bought our first home, we painted all of our house in vibrant colors. So the kitchen is peacock, tail, teal, and purple, light purple, violet or something. And then we have like little things that we paint all over the place. 
we have like billiard table green, we have scarlet red, we have all gold, silver. Our house is like very colorful. So, okay, here we go. The, the stuff is boiling. Let's get the pasta ready. Uh, this is like a good amount of pasta for like one or two people, okay? Um, you don't want to like have take the whole box and literally, you know, if you're just having a meal, okay? Just like that. And you're going to break it in half by pointing it, hold it close like this. You don't have to break it in half, but I like to hold, push it, aim it toward the pot, not towards somebody's face and break it. Okay, drop. All right. Then we're going to take our potato dumpling. So we're going to have these bigger things in here. So we're actually going to have light, medium, heavy pasta. Okay. So that was the heavy. The angel hair was the light. We're going to mix that around. And then the last thing is going to be our homemade pasta. And that's the medium. So I'm just going to take this, drop it in. All this takes about the same amount of time to cook. So that's good. Raise my heat. Ouch. Give everything a stir so nothing sticks together. The last thing you want to do, guys, and I've done this when I was younger, is to take a whole box of pasta, dump it in a big pot of boiling water, and just leave it. Because what happens is if you don't give it a stir, you're going to think it's done because it's been the right amount of time. But you're just going to have this a whole bunch of clumps of pasta that's all stuck together. And it's going to be raw and it's not going to be done. Okay, so with a metal pan, guys, remember, if it looks cool, it's probably not. <laughs> so you want to have a, a, a mitt, okay? So this is metal. This is all metal. So this part of the pan is cool because it's further away. But this little part of the pan that I'm going to hold on to is not. It's hot. So I'm gonna lift this up very carefully. When you're walking through a kitchen, if somebody else was here, I would say coming behind, or I would say behind, because you don't want anybody to just, you could get hurt really badly if you get boiling water splashed on you. But everything is. Okay. Okay. Give a knife, a fork, a spoon, and a fork. Okay. See this here. Hold on. This is better. This is the homemade pasta that we made. You see how nice and wide that is? Yes. Okay, good. And it's nice and wide. This is the angel hair that we made that I bought from Aldi's. I'm trying to give you so you don't get the glare. All right. And this is the potato gnocchi. Hold on a second. Better if I do this. I'm making him move everywhere. Okay, so we're gonna show both cameras. So this is what that sauce looks like in this camera, Patrick. Can you see? Good. Good, okay. We're gonna to cater to both cameras here. And then for you guys to see, can you see this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. All right, I know you're hungry. <laughs> Okay, Patrick, come on over here. In front I've never of this. thought about combining pastas like that. Yes, yeah, so I love doing this. And this is also basically just for the class too, but I wanted to show a difference in the pastas. Okay, Patrick, will you come over here and try the homemade ones first and tell us what you Where's think. Patrick. <laughs> Hello, Patrick. Hello. So what chewy. are you? Chewy. Chewy? Mm -hmm. Very chewy. Do they taste done? Yeah, it tastes done. Okay. Just chewy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, try slippery. the slippery. Try the a lot of olive oil. Try the angel hair pasta. Mm -hmm. So he says it's very Hello Patrick. Hello. That's Derek. What do you think about Al dente. The... Al dente? Mm -hmm. Is it al dente? Do you taste the lemon? Yeah, you get that spring back. Do you taste the lemon? I do taste the lemon. Okay, try mm -hmm. the yep. uh, gnocchi. Gnocchi. So different pastas taste different with different sauces. 
Doughy. Doughy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going to try a different plate with the other sauce. Brown butter and sage. sage. And, and Parmesan. Okay, so that's... Oh, I just dumped the whole spoon into my, old, my mixture. I hate when that happens. Okay, mixing this up. And I'm going to show the cameras. Let me get the Parmesan. We're a little all okay. over the kitchen today. So this is this dish. Can you see it? Tell me how you feel about this one. The sauce. Okay, on the different pastas. Try the homemade first. I can smell first. the cheese. Try the homemade first. Or are you going to try the angel hair first? Okay, oh, sorry. Ahead. That's all right. It's okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you think about that one? That could have been served in a restaurant. Really? Yeah. That that the the combination of the cheese and the and the sage butter. Uh-huh. Boom. Try the, the homemade. Homemade. Okay, he's trying the homemade noodle now. What do you think about mm, that? Definitely. Do you yeah. Do you think that we need more practice with the homemade noodle? Like do I maybe I could use a a little bit more no. thinner? No. Or? No. I okay. like the fact that it's broad. Uh-huh. Okay. And it holds like the sauce. Try the on gnocchi. It. Try the gnocchi with it. <laughs> what do you think? It's good, but I I think the broad noodle is the best for this sauce. Okay. Which is my opinion. Okay. He likes the homemade noodle better with this sauce. Mm -hmm. And how about the other sauce? Which noodle did you like with the other sauce? I have to say, I think it was the capellini. I think it was the angel hair. Angel hair. Mm -hmm. He liked the capellini or the angel hair with the um, olive oil, tomato, lemon sauce. I do not. I think it was a great class. Yeah. I'm hungry. I want to go make <laughs> yeah. some pasta noodles. I'm also hungry. Yeah. Yes, and my, whole, and my whole kitchen is demolished. <laughs> so I'll clean. I'll clean. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for your great cooking lesson again. Sure. Thanks for more week, guys, left. Any previews of what we're going to make next week? Um, so Ooh. they asked to do the sushi roll next week. So we'll do sushi maki roll, um, a sushi, two different kinds of sushi, um, and ham roll. We'll do three different kinds of sushi rolls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'll be good. Uh, It'll be exciting. good. Yay. Thanks for being here, guys. We will All see right. you next week. See you guys next week. Bye.